All right, let's go out to St. Paul, Minnesota, and talk to Jane. Sweet Jane. What's up? Um, hi, Dr. Loney. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. Um, How are we doing? I'm uh, not, not too bad. How about yourself? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad either. Not too bad either. What's up? Good. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to read my question because I'm really nervous, if that's okay. Of course. Of course it is. Uh, okay. So my question is actually twofold. Number one, should I be completely honest with my husband during difficult conversations about our sex life? And number two, how do I fix the sexual side of my marriage? Um, um, yeah. I have some context. <laughs> is there some content? There you go. No, let's just answer it like that. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So um, we've been married for almost 30 years, and I do not feel sexual desire for my husband. Um, and with few exceptions, I really never have. We're best friends platonically, but I've never felt spontaneous or responsive sexual desire. Um, and I've tried prayer, counseling, porn, hormone level testing, religion, ignoring the problem completely, meditation, antidepressants, alcohol, lots and lots of faking it, and nothing has worked. Mm. So I'm worried about being 85 someday and feeling regret that I didn't experience sexual connection and desire. Okay. Um, my husband has called me out several times over the years for not being sexually attracted to him and I lie and deny it because I love him and I don't want to hurt him, but he obviously feels it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll answer this and answer this in reverse order. Sometimes we don't want to hurt people that we love, especially about a sensitive topic like this and that so much of our personal identities wound up in it. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, we, hedge the truth or we don't tell them the full truth because we don't want to hurt them. And that makes them feel crazy because they feel that they feel you're not in, right. They feel, they feel the gap, if you will, relationally. And, um, instead of giving them a hard answer that we can fix or we can solve or at least deal with once it's on the table, um, we tell them, no, 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 I'm, I'm totally into you sexually, or I'm totally into moving, or I'm totally into how we're raising our kids. And they know something's not right. So they end up trying to fix it and solve it. And then they go crazy. Um, so yes, okay. to reverse answer, I don't see a path forward that doesn't start with telling the truth. The question I would ask you is what about your relationship has prohibited you for 30 years to not be able to tell the truth? I, I think really just that I, I don't want to hurt his feelings. But, um, but like in my house, you know? in my house, my wife and I know that, hurting feelings going through that pain is the only path forward to resolving whatever's on the table, which means not that we're not going to hurt each other's feelings, but we have to have, create a context where it's okay to say what's true. And for whatever reason, either you have taken on a maternal role with your husband. It's your job is to make sure he feels okay. It's which is mm -hmm. different than I want to connect with him. Um, the second or the second is he's created a world where it's not safe for you to tell the truth in that house. I, it's probably more the, the first. I just don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm afraid of consequences of the conversation. Like I, I don't know. I think over time he said things like, well, you either feel it or you don't. Um, and, and so it's almost like if I follow that up by admitting it out loud, then it's like kind of game over in his mind. Like I should have it or I don't have it. And if I don't have it, there's no fixing it. That's, that's the impression I've always gotten. And so. Well, that's, I mean, that's, me that's, that's somebody <laughs> reaching out out of pain because the, he's probably watched you try a whole bunch of stuff and mm -hmm. in his mind, he's not enough. Right. Yeah. And so it's easy to come up right. with some simplistic, it sounds very pol like a politician. Well, it's because of this. Well, no, it's not. There's a lot of nuance there. There's a lot of stuff there. And so, um, it sounds like you, you're you asking for two things. You want to preserve this marriage as it is with your quote-unquote best friend in the world, and you also don't want to be 90 and wonder what it would have been like to have a reckless, wild, sexually romantic marriage. Right. And it's almost like if you tell the truth, you know this thing's over. Or at least the illusion, the, the fake thing y'all have had is over. Right. That's true. So I, I don't know if I need to, I don't want to preserve the fake thing anymore though. Yeah. You know? yeah Not it. That's why I'm calling. <laughs> well, it, it, like I'm never going to tell somebody to, to continue to lie about something that's not right. 
Okay. I'll never tell them that. Which means you got to deal with the hard, gnarly truth on the back end. And that's scary too. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for three decades. Let me ask you a hard question. What else have you not told him the truth about? You don't want to hurt his feelings. Because there's more than just this. Um, I mean, I guess there's just, you know, normal marriage stuff. I mean, nope, no, 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 no. stuff that annoys me. <laughs> so there's stuff that annoys me. And I, I just don't say anything because I think he thinks it's part of his personality. And I, I again, don't want, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to like squash who he is. Um, so you, you've, always, you've been to, I, a, I don't want to diagnose any, go ahead. Uh, well, you, you know, you finished what you were going to say. I, I don't want to diagnose anyone because that's your job or somebody else's job, but he has a lot of things that I would consider ADHD ish. Like, okay. um, you know, timeline over talking, interrupting, oversharing kind of a verbal diarrhea, <laughs> you know, type thing. Um, and it's, you know, it's like an embarrassing feeling sometimes when we're, we're with other people. And so I, I avoid being with other people with him over the years. Not that, you know, we're hermits or anything, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> so some of those things I've just never, I mean, I maybe brought them up very mildly, but I just always kind of back off of them. I, I don't tell them how much it's bothering me, you know, and what effect it's had on me. I hate that for you and I hate that for him. I really do. But I feel like if I tell him, he's going to be like, well, then you basically don't like anything about me, you know? Yeah, but I, he deserved to have that had that conversation true. 30 freaking years ago, Jane. Because he could have done something different with his life and you could have done something different with yours. Or one of the, this is anecdata behind closed doors, is when I meet with people with ADHD, especially couples, what I often hear is, my God, this person's bananas and it's tough to live with. And my God, when they are plugged in, they're the greatest lover on planet Earth. Mm. but you haven't given y'all. I mean, geez, I often don't say this, but you've, you've perpetuated. Well, why have you stayed in this? What do you, what did you get out of it? I mean, we get along. You no, know? you don't. Not you like do not. Along. Jane, you don't, you know why you don't like him. You don't like him. He's a kid to you. He's your child. He's an adult son. You don't like how he is in public. You don't think his jokes are funny. You think they're inappropriate. He doesn't, he's late to stuff. You're not attracted to him. You don't want to sleep with him. He's not your friend. He's, he's like a pet, right? I'm just using your words. Give me something back. No, I, I, <laughs> I can't refute a lot of that. But I do find him funny. We're in sync. He's a good dad. I mean, like there's, a lot of things that I do appreciate about him were uh, but you don't you don't like him I don't like some of his behaviors I didn't say I didn't like him but you don't like him you enough know? to tell him the truth for three decades and, and here's here's all I'm saying um, I'm not saying he's perfect in any way and he's got a lot of stuff to change I'm speaking as a guy who struggles with some of the things he struggles with and I'm so blessed that I had a wife sit down with me while she was still my girlfriend. And then early on, and then as we figured it out later, mm -hmm. to just be honest with me about how she was experiencing me. And mm -hmm. then I can't imagine waking up 30 years and knowing that most of the romance in my life has been fraudulent. Because I know what it's like to go to bed at night thinking the whole thing is your fault. And it's just, I mean, God, dude, it's, 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 so yes, you have to tell the truth, period. Okay. Okay. The second thing is, is I don't know a lot of intimacy. I don't know anyone that can experience deep intimacy, especially over time with a lie. That's, that's the big, like, secrets are the gap. Mm -hmm. And for, you said you've never felt sexually attracted to him. Well, I mean, I did when we were dating, <laughs> you know, obviously. Not um, obviously, because I would have said, obviously, you've told him the truth for 30 years and you haven't done that. Are you, do you find yourself sexually attracted to other people? Um, no, I mean, it, no, 
Okay. I mean, if I see like a really good looking guy, am I, am I going to turn my head? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm human, but not like I'm pursuing other people or anything. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, is he is your husband for 30 years. So he's the bearing the brunt of the weight of your, mm -hmm. your lack of like the gap between how sexual you want to be and what's actually happening in real life. But my yeah. question is, are you, would you classify yourself as, as someone who is asexual? Just, I'm not into it. Or it just, I, I have gone through this and this and this and this, and I'm not into it. Or I'm just not into it with that guy. And there's a difference there. I think there. probably the second, I think probably the latter. I, I, so you, but so, I don't so let's, know. let's play this out. Let's play this out. You and him break up tomorrow. You just call it. And you immediately get tender and you swipe right. And some other dude swipes right. And y'all meet up. Do you think it would, that would be the, that would be the alchemy you've been looking for. That there's somebody else out there that you would feel rambunctiously sexually attracted to. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I've not thought about that. Honestly. You have to have thought about it some because you've spent a lot of time thinking about it not be—I mean, it not being him, right? Or maybe, maybe you haven't well, I just, at all. I, I just want it to be in our marriage. Like I feel connected to him. On, I'm connected to him. We've been together for almost thirty years, right? Yeah. And I, I want to do the right thing here. Finally, maybe, or not maybe. I do want to do the right thing okay. for for his sake and for mine. You know. Yeah. Um, so let's be real specific about your needs. What, what are they? If you had to, if you had to write down on paper, here's my sexual needs. What are they? I want to be connected to him and feel like he's connected to me. You've for 30 years, you've not allowed him to be connected to you. So let's go deeper than that. Like that's a, that's an amorphous answer, right? So that starts with telling the truth, but let's get beneath that. Be very specific. What do you, what are you missing? You don't like how he smells. You don't like him without a shirt no, on. Like, what no, it, no, what is all it? that is fine. Um, I mean, he's attractive. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, either one of us is, I don't know. There's no like body issues or anything. Um, okay. I don't know. I, I, I need romance, I guess a little bit. I okay. need, um, you know, I guess romance maybe is a starting point. Mm. And when somebody no, says no. romance, that often means, um, and I'm, I'm I, normally I would just sit here and make you like, not, I would make you go through the motions of here. I want to be specific about the things I believe would lead to this erotic attraction. Um, mm -hmm. and you've been through a lot. You've been through all the normal things that people do when they Google like, Hey, what do I do? Right. But often those are tactics or they are specifics or they are focused on the act once the bedroom door closes, right? And when somebody says romance, often what they mean is I need a different context. I need my life to feel and look different so that I can be erotic inside this world that we, you and I are co-creating. Okay. Does that sound right or no? It does sound right, but I don't know how to, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> um, do you know what I'm saying? Like, how do I, other than being honest with him? <laughs> yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> that's, that's step one. Um, here's the hard place you find yourself. You're going to have to sit down to a man that you love, that you've spent probably more time with him in your life than you have without him. Is that fair? Yes. And you're going to have to say, I haven't told you the truth for about 30 years. Okay. And from that conversation, and it will be devastating. One, because he's hurt you for so long. He didn't know he was. Two, the dishonesty. This is going to be a hard, hard path. His world will be uneven 
he won't be able to stand on the foundation that he thought his life was. And in a weird way, it'll be such a great relief. I've talked with couples before that say things like, I wish she would just tell me she's cheating on me. Then I wouldn't feel so insane. We'd have to deal with the infidelity and I'd have to get a new life and all that. But God, at least I wouldn't be feel like I'm crazy. And so, but when you do this, have this conversation, you're going to have to be specific about what has to happen in this new marriage you'll have to build because you're not going backwards to when y'all were dating. You're going to have to decide we're going to build something totally new. And that's where you have to be specific in this new marriage. Here's what romance feels and looks like to me. You're on, you're on time to things. You help pick up the kids. There's never dishes in the sink after I cook dinner. You've got to go get a job. You have to quit drinking after, you know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The specifics. And okay. after 30 years, he needs a roadmap to your heart because he thought he was there and he is not. Okay. That doesn't mean that this is all going to fix your sexual dysfunction. It's going to give it a chance. Right. The last question I have for you is this. Do you want to feel sexual desire or do you want to want to feel sexual desire towards him? And you get the difference in that question? Oh, I'm not, not entirely, no. I would love to want to live in New York City. The energy, mm-hmm. the fun, the constant noise, and in, like, the, the, like all of it. I'd love to want to do that. It sounds like it would be fun. I don't. Mm-hmm. My wife lo- would love to love, my lo- wife would love to want to go to punk rock shows with me. Mm-hmm. They're too loud. And I like mosh pitting, even though I'm old and she doesn't like that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's step one. The other side of it, that's not step one, but that's one side. I want to want to Mm -hmm. live in New York, but I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I like nature and I like trees and I like the woods and I like a slower pace. Okay. That's why I like Texas or like Tennessee. It's why I like Kentucky. I like some of these slower places. Okay. On the Mm -hmm. other side, um, if you want to, like, I want to get in shape. Well, cool. Then I've, I, there's a thousand plans out there to go get in shape. I'm going to follow one of those plans and the shape part will take, will, will happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So which one do you, which, where do you find yourself? Do you just want to want to be romantically I've, attracted to him? It's just not going to happen. Or no, I want to, I'm going to deal with this hard stuff. And then we're going to go try to make that happen. No, I want to. Okay. All right. That at least tells me I'll have a chance. Okay. Otherwise your honesty conversation is totally different. Okay. Okay. And I, I, can I ask you one more question before we go? Sure. When you met with a therapist, they didn't tell you this. Um, I mean, they didn't say you got to be honest not, and tell not, the truth. I think they were playing off of my reluctance, maybe, or just giving into my reluctance to be honest. Maybe I, I no, not in that, not in that straightforward manner. No one said that to me. No. I'm sorry, um, man. You got really bad, bad support and care. It's brutal, dude. If I'm you, here's how I would start the conversation. I would say. We have to have a hard conversation. It's going to take a few hours and it's going to be tough for you to process. And I haven't cheated on you. The marriage isn't over. So I didn't do anything. I didn't spend a million dollars. Like, whew. and also I want to be married to you. I want to love you the best I can. And I want to give you a roadmap to love me. And for 30 years, I've withheld that roadmap and I'm sorry. And in fact, I'm still figuring out what it is. But there can be no intimacy. There can be no new marriage. There can be no relationship without me if, without me first being honest with you. So we're going to start. We're going to re- re-pour the foundation today, and it's with honesty, and I'm going to go first. And then he may need silence. He may need a week. He may need what? who knows what he'll need. But I want you to be gracious enough and give it to him.
And he's going to come back with a bunch of questions. He's going to first think, well, what else have you lied about? What else this? What? Be prepared for all that. And be prepared to say, in this new marriage I want to build, here's some things I'm going to need so that we can build an erotic ethos in this home, a home that pulses with romance, that pulses with desire. And that starts with us building something totally new. And for everybody listening, for God's sakes, you have to tell the truth in your marriage, period, even when it's hard. Especially when it's hard. Lying never solves a thing in a marriage. 